So it's good going to be really nice continuous of the previous talk because uh, I'm going to talk about the name profiling and uh, basically it's kind of the I would say 21st version of the 21st century version of the fingerprinting. Yeah, maybe this pause I can I guess, like can describe what we are doing. Yeah, actually we are doing experiment and. Uh, uh, we are trying to keep using just the LIPO from 10 random people, actually, we are exactly here, like 10 these people. And uh, based on the saliva of the people, we are trying to predict and tell uh, what's the gender of the person. So, and, uh, how does this method work? Actually, we will describe that. So, 1982, uh, 14 years, an uh, old girl was killed in the middle of England. And uh, the point is that after 4 years, and you of the same city, an now 14 years old girl was killed. And uh, the same crime scene, everything really looked similar. And the investigators found the one guy, Richard Butland, and he suspected as a killer. But there's one problem, there's not enough proof. And uh, there's one issue with him, that he is mentally sick. And he's changing mind really, very really, uh, frequently. So the question is, is Richard Butland really criminal or not? The second snapshot, DNA paternity testing. Uh, this kid, we have a kid, we have two parents, uh, and uh, we have an investigation. We really want to know is this two parents really parents to this kid, or there's another man or woman uh, parents to this kid. So basically, uh, okay, the main question, of course, here how the stories which I just told you, the criminal story and this story, related to each other? And the thing is that we are pretty related because under the hood there's a one method which both method, both stories utilize to really to answer for the two questions. Like question who is the criminal and the second one who is the father or who is the mom. Uh, but basically it's, uh, I just want to kind of convince you that uh, uh, this method, uh, that actually uh, fingerprinting was really a method which made breakthrough in uh, one century ago. But now, I would say the new uh, version of the fingerprinting is actually DNA fingerprinting. And this method is uh, really making and have done a huge revolution in the field of criminalistic, especially. So, but the problem with uh, fingerprinting, DNA fingerprinting, is uh, actually pretty, kind of, pretty clear. Imagine we have our fingerprints uh, from the crime scene, let's say in some bottle, yeah, and you have uh, 10 suspected people. And what should you do? You should just take the uh, fingerprints of these people and uh, try to find the emerge, try to find the uh, person who has the very similar fingerprints. Okay, it's fine, but how can we do with DNA? What should we do with DNA to really find the uh, like match between person to person? And more of the uh, modern criminals who are actually pretty smart, uh, we're kind of using gloves or something like this. And uh, but basically. Based on, I don't know, piece of saliva, piece of the blood, can we find who is who? And actually we can. But uh, uh, to really understand how we can we do it, we should go from up to bottom. So we know this, we, that we have a, all our body consists of the cells. And inside the cell there's a chromosomes, and in chromosomes there's a DNA. But actually, what I'm showing here, uh, this is actually a super nice experiment which we have done in a second a year in university. We actually were taking cells from the cheek, the cheek sorry, and uh, making suspension of them and actually making drop of the cells on a, like a piece of glass. And the point is when these cells crashing and the, against this glass, we're actually we exploding. And all things from inside are like spreading around this glass. And uh, basically using some special colors, you can see the chromosomes. This is really chromosomes of two different persons. And the question is, do you see any difference between one sample and another sample? I guess it's super hard. <laughs> yes, so the point is, every person has a, uh, 22 chromosomes, 22 pairs of chromosomes. Uh, one from one, one from another, from fa father. But there's one special pair, uh, this kind of gender pair. Uh, one, in the case of men, it's XY, in the case of a female, it's uh, XX. And uh, these two uh, samples, we can see there's, there's a difference between them, one of them for men and one for women. Okay, it's fine. Now we really understand how to distinguish men and, and like female and male uh, samples. 
but the question is how can we distinguish uh, samples from different uh, females or from different males? So you should trust me, we cannot use this method. We, uh, like chromosomes looks really pretty similar uh, like within females or within males. So we should really go deeper. We should go, deep, uh, go deeper and we should go on the level of the molecular level. So, but there's one problem. We really should zoom like six orders. I just, it's really very hard to imagine what does it mean six orders or nine orders. The, and really to say to you what does it mean, like uh, how to compare, how that, to make feeling, what does it mean? Imagine this, uh, this is the diameter of this pen, is actually uh, as well as di like the same as the diameter of DNA. We have kind of special world like this. And uh, the point is, in this imagination world, one meter distance going to be distance between uh, center of Earth to the Moon. So it's really super hard to work with such scale, and uh, we should really invent some and our technologies to do this. But first of all, we should really understand what DNA is. So DNA is a linear heteropolymer. And uh, what does it mean polymer? Basically, polymer is a special type of uh, molecules uh, where we have certain blocks, and these blocks are repeated. Uh, in the case of DNA, it's it's really linear. Uh, and uh, the thing is that uh, these blocks can be the same, but can be different. And in the case of DNA, it's blocks actually where can be where really different. That's why we name DNA heter heteropolymer because one block can be either Adenine, either cytosine, either guanine, either thymine. And for simplicity, we just name them A, C, G, T. And uh, so the thing is the DNA uh, double stranded. It's super tricky actually, polymer. Uh, we have not just one strand, linear strand, we have two strands. And by really interacting between each other, there's a really, you, maybe you see, there's a small interaction between them, and we're really, really very weak. The point is, if you increase the temperature uh, until 95 degrees, which actually we have done, anyway, so you're really able to destroy these connections. Okay, the next property is the complementarity rule. Maybe you noticed uh, double-stranded DNA, uh, and uh, in, in this double-stranded DNA we, we have just uh, two types of pairs, A against T and C against G, and nothing else that you do not find the uh, prayer like A and G. So this is exactly complementarity rule. Why it's so important? Because it's really dictate uh, how life can multiple, multiply uh, yourself, like how we can replicate cells. You just need to kind of destroy a cell, <laughs> sorry, like remove uh, two strands, separate two strands, and uh, based on the complementarity rule, just fill the, like, the rest. And as a result, instead of just one DNA, you will have two. So it's exactly the most important property of the life, division. Uh, there's another tricky thing. Actually, I really uh, I was ashamed by my first supervisor in the university that I didn't know about this. But actually, it's super important. So uh, there's a strand direction. Uh, you, you see these sugars. Actually, sorry, it's uh, uh, sugar here. <laughs> Uh, and you see, there's a certain direction of this sugar. This is actually corner looking all the time on, on up, and th in this case, in this trend, sugar looking down. And actually, as a result, people say, okay, uh, let's say uh, this is going to be forward direction, it's going to be reverse direction. Perfect. Why it's so important? And there's a small reason for this. There's a uh, machine, uh, actually a molecular machine, which uh, doing uh, actually replication of DNA. So, first of all, this machine uh, needs a certain situation when you have a, a single strand DNA and small piece here. Like, you know, if we name this piece like a primer. You, uh, because DNA cannot start from the, uh, sorry, DNA polymerase cannot start from the empty place. Uh, DNA polymerase really needs some primer. And the polymerase, DNA polymerase uh, really finding this primer, sitting in this place, and next asking, okay, on this, uh, on the, this strand, which nucleotide is standing right now? Okay, T. So I should really catch from the from the uh, surrounding of the cell, catch adenine, and insert inside, insert this DNA. 
And uh, etc. We see there's a G, so we should insert by based on the complementarity rule uh, C. We see here C, and we should insert G in the front. And uh, the actually cool thing, maybe you noticed, there's actually three balls here, and in D or there's just one ball. And actually, uh, these building blocks were actually pretty clever made. In the same time, we're building blocks, but in the same time, we're uh, uh, batteries. We're kind of energetic batteries. So polymerase is kind of, you know, thermodynamic machine, and uh, he needs some energy to do some stuff. And uh, this is exactly what this machine is finding there. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry. So, okay, let's come back to the, our previous question. What's the difference between people? And actually, maybe you know, there's a one key difference, mutations. And actually I would say this is the most important uh, difference between all of us. We have actually, uh, in general, we have one uh, mutation per average, which uh, makes difference, me and you, uh, on a huge genome. And, uh, <coughs> and actually, uh, it's not, it's not uh, except mutation, there's uh, one more difference. And actually, it's actually really important to say about this difference. And this difference is microsatellites. Basically, it just means that uh, in a certain position of genome, we can have either 1G, but either 5G. So somehow it happened that the number of the nucleotides in a certain posi position very variable. So it can be either 1, in my case, on one chromosome, and 5 on another chromosome. But in the case of Leon, for example, it can be uh, 6 and 7. And actually, the thing is, um, this is exactly <laughs> this is exactly our fingerprints. If you think about it. mutations and these repeats, but if you come back to the 80s, uh, cool 80s, uh, you will understand that it's much easier to measure the length when uh, measure which nucleotides you have in certain position. And actually, what we're doing here is actually super close to, not to the mutations, but it's really. Uh, working on the principle of measuring on the length of these microsatellites. So how we can measure this length uh, back to the 80s? So in order to really measure this, we need actually uh, one important thing. Julie, you stole jelly. Okay, can, can you give? So this is uh, it's not dangerous without any poison. So uh, this is exactly like agarose. Maybe some of some of you knows what is it like. Actually, I think in the, uh, in the kitchen, uh, in my mom's kitchen, I for sure can find agarose because she's using it for, you know, jelly, uh, uh, super nice things. But basically, molecular level, on molecular level, agarose looks like a jungle. There's a lot of trees, and uh, if you're a small mouse, if you're a small DNA, you can really pass through this uh, jungle super fast and super far away. But if you're a huge elephant, or huge DNA, it's super hard to uh, make several meters walk forward. And uh, this is actually super applied to the, uh, to the DNA thing. Uh, yeah, it's super jelly. <laughs> uh, so just think about the mouse, as I said. Mouse can walk like this, yeah, and the elephant as well. But the point is how DNA can walk. The point is we utilize one super important property of DNA, that's DNA uh, negatively, negatively charged. And as a result, we can use this machine. Uh, can I touch it? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, we, we can use this machine uh, to make an um, uh, electric field. So because DNA is uh, positive, uh, negatively charged, we can put DNA into this gel, into this uh, jungle, and force DNA by electric field to move through this jungle. So as a result, we really can separate short DNA and long DNA. And actually, this is exactly what we're doing here right now, because uh, there's a 165 volts, and uh, DNA, DNA walking... Uh, I will stop for a second. Uh, and you see there's a kind of... Uh, you see this color? Uh, this exactly DNA is going on. Uh, okay, it's not pretty DNA. <laughs> it's actually a special color which going in front of, uh, let's say, single nucleotide, yeah? Uh, one nucleotide, it's super small mouse, let's say. <laughs> and uh, it's just showing you the front of the DNAs. And actually, right now, the 
I continue experiment because we need higher resolution. We need to give them more time for mouse and elephants to go forward. Uh, fine. So, that, uh, but let's say you want to do it in the kitchen at home. As I said, you can find agarose at home. Don't worry, it's written like for molecular biology. Can happen. So, uh, what should you do? You should, uh, to make this gel which you actually touched, uh, you should uh, take water, put the agarose inside, and uh, boil it in the uh, in, uh, microwave. Easily. And the second thing, and the super important, uh, you should add a, a special color, colorful uh, compound. This special colorful compound is super dangerous. It's actually super toxic. Uh, because uh, this compound intercalate, uh, like binding very uh, strong with DNA. So what, what, whatever binding to the DNA, uh, uh, by default, is a uh, mutagenal uh, generator, <laughs> let's say. So, and the thing is that next, to make some certain shape of this gel, we are putting in uh, this uh, uh, fancy box. And, uh, and that's it. So the next, next, actually, next step which you should make, hmm. you should uh, actually understand what polymer exchange reaction is. Uh, first of all, when I say polymer, uh, when I say chain reaction, what are you thinking about? Like, what's your imagination, how it's working? Kind of, what's, huh? Nuclear bomb. Yeah, actually, Julie, my girlfriend, she, she told me uh, domino effect, yeah. But in my brain, it was, uh, sorry, nuclear explosion. <laughs> and, uh, but actually, <clears throat> the thing is that you can do nuclear explosion, so let's say, safe way, in a lab. You just have to add this, uh, you remember, polymerase, DNA polymerase. And uh, you, should, you should have uh, six components. First of all, it's really important, you have, should have passion. It's, uh, we really repeated this experiment numerous amount of time and I'm really sorry Julie for several days for the results deep etc. So it was really a lot of work <laughs> and it's not working from the first, uh, first time. And uh, you should really optimize a lot. Uh, the one biggest problem is actually saliva from the people because uh, it can be different. <laughs> Let's put it like this. Uh, sometimes it's super hard to clean it and etc. So, as I said, you need to have uh, some sample, biological sample. Actually, it can be not just saliva, it can be blood, it can be piece of skin, it can be nail, and uh, whatever you can imagine. Uh, yeah, hair, of course. Uh, and uh, one of the most important things, why it's named polymerase chain reaction, you should add a poly sorry, not just polymerase, you should add spicy hot polymerase. What do I mean spicy hot? It just means that this polymerase should really be stable uh, in the boiling water. In 95 degrees, you know, if you put eggs in 95 degrees for a long period of time, you will have denaturation of the egg. But if you put the spicy hot polymerase, uh, it should be stable. It should be functional all the time. You may ask, where did you find this polymerase, spicy hot polymerase? No, we didn't find this in Mexico. We actually found the thing in Yellowstone Park in the United States. Uh, there's a special bacteria, I think we're living not just in the United States, uh, we're living in a, uh, like hot uh, springs. And we're super kind of stable, like to live in this temperature. Okay, and one more thing, you need uh, building blocks. Remember I told you we need three, all, all four building blocks for polymerase to work. One more thing, and actually we'll understand later, we need oligonucleotides. How did we find this oligonucleotides? It's actually another question. We went to FBI website and uh, we found spe specific oligonucleotides which used for the uh, criminals. We really ordered several, uh, uh, several oligonucleotides using money of the German government. Let's not talk about this. So, <laughs> and uh, the last thing, it's also super important, you should have cool and hot green machine. What do I mean cool and hot? Uh, it's just this machine is kind of the refrigerator, but at the same time it's a boiler. So it's kind of a machine which can change temperature, temperature super fast. And actually next you will understand why it's so important. So we took all these six uh, things together, especially patients, and uh, put in one tube. And actually if you imagine this tube, we have just few DNAs, because usually criminals are leaving just one hair, not like all hair from the head. And, uh, our lovely spicy hot polymerase, a uh, huge amount of nucleotides with uh, triphosphate and uh, oligonucleotides. And uh, everything going on super peaceful in 24 degrees. 
everything fine. But we may increase temperature until 95 degrees. So we basically we almost boiling water. But most important thing which go on here, we actually destroy the connection between DNA, between two strands. We kind of separating them completely. This was connection between two strands, now there's none. And the thing is, <laughs> next we decrease in temperature, but not until 24 degrees, we decreasing until 72. The point is that there's uh, bacteria in, uh, in, from uh, Yellowstone Park where living in 72 degrees and where feel really pretty comfortable uh, in 72 degrees. And this polymerase evolutionally uh, was uh, like made in such a way that this polymerase is perfectly working in 72 degrees, but not 73, not 71, perfectly just in 72 degrees. We decreasing this temperature until 72 degrees. This oligonucleotides, which we found in the FBI list, in the FBI website, we kind of found the region and the region on DNA, or where we complement, where we complement to, and uh, we designed this. Sorry, FBI uh, designed this oligonucleotides in such way that's why kind of we're sitting just before repeat region and just after repeat region. And actually, it's super important because this oligonucleotides will allow us to multiply, to amplify, especially specifically this region just before and just like just between these two oligonucleotides. So we increase until 72 degrees. Oligonucleotides found the complementarity, complementarity pair, and the spicy hot polymerase found this uh, superfighting combination. And um, it stopped working. We give some time. We give actually few dozen seconds. Uh, and polymerase uh, hardly going and work, do a job like finding nucleotides, inserting, finding another nucleotide, inserting, moving forward. And uh, but the point is, and now we kind of closing our loop, we increasing again temperature until 95 degrees. And uh, now just make impression. Uh, this was previous 95 degree. We have seven pieces of DNA here. But now. Uh, when we increase the second time, 95 degrees, we have already two times more DNA inside of the tube. And the thing is, that's actually this uh, reason why we name this reaction as a chain reaction. Because after every step of uh, increasing 95 degrees, decreasing 72 degrees, increasing 95, uh, we just increase the number of DNA of this specific region uh, even two times. And the point is, uh, uh, we're doing this 30, 30 cycles. So basically, if you just have one DNA in the tube, I don't know, it's actually happens sometimes. For example, if you know about the other project, sometimes it's really very hard to take uh, to find any DNA in the bones. But if you're speaking about criminals, criminal can have just one hair here or one cell. And uh, after 30 cycles, just one DNA will give us two in the power of 30 products. So imagine we are really increasing the amount drastically. And the thing is that we're increasing amount of DNA so much that we already will be able to see this by eye. You remember this intercalating uh, uh, color, like which we used to prepare gel, not you, not this gel which you are actually touching right now, gel which is sitting here. Uh, this intercalating compound uh, just highlights the DNA, where there's a huge amount of DNA, and actually the electrophorase allows us to separate these pieces. Okay, let's let's go for the example DNA paternity test. Imagine father, uh, male, uh, has a, like uh, in certain position of genome have uh, one repeat of G and three repeat of G on the number chromosome because we you know mom father. So and the female has uh, two repeats on one chromosome and four repeats on the number chromosome. And now if you take the samples from them and put on a gel like after all these PCR things after cleaning blah blah blah. You will see like such a picture. This is positive charge. Uh, DNA started from the up and down, and as a result, the small mice, the small mice, mouse, pass really far away, like close to the positive charge, uh, to the anode. And the uh, second, uh, second one is uh, uh, two lengths, like two nucleotides, three nucleotides, and four nucleotides. And the point is, let's imagine we have a kid. Uh, we kind of uh, we give one chromosome. Uh, father gave kid one chromosome. Mom gave another chromosome. And as a result, we can have just one of the fourth combination. We can have either combination in the, in the case of kid one two, one four, either three two, three four. So in this in this case, I just showed the example of the 
actually, as you see, 1 and 4. So if you run this gel, if the real situation like this, you will say, hmm, look at this. We kind of uh, seeing that uh, this kit can be generated uh, by these parts. This distribution can be generated by these parts. And uh, basically, the problem, there's just one small problem. That's uh, this pattern 1 and 4 for kit can generate a two person from the street. It can, can happen by, by chance that two persons from the street have the same repeats. And uh, how we can solve it, this problem? The thing is that uh, these re repeat regions, uh, there's not just one repeat region in our genome, there's a multiple. For example, in FBI, using 16 uh, regions to detect criminals. And uh, there's actually a lot of these uh, repeat regions in our genome, and they are very highly variable. And to really to increase the uh, robustness of our method, we, we measure not just one repeat, we measure 16. To decrease really probability that just two random people from the street can uh, generate a pattern for, for the random kid. Uh, and, uh, okay, let's come back to the criminal story. Uh, the thing is that uh, this, uh, uh, the first uh, girl was killed in 1982. The second girl was killed in 1986. And, but this method of measuring of length of microsatellites was invented in 1984. And actually investigators get to know about this method. And uh, we say, let's try to, to use this. And what we have done, first of all, two really fast steps. Uh, first step, we measured the, uh, sorry to say, we measured the sperm from the both girls. And we proved that the person who killed them is the same person. We really measured the length of these uh, satellites and we shown that we are similar. So this is the same person. And next thing which we have done, we remember this poor guy Richard Buckland. Actually, we just compared the repeats of the Richard Buckland and the sperm, and we show that this is completely two different persons. So Richard Buckland, not criminal at all. And next, this was a routine actually, because you should really find a person who has uh, this pattern of the re uh, repeats, this amount of repeats in this chromosome, this amount of repeats in this chromosome, and actually we, we kind of really forced population of uh, several uh, cities around of this criminal place, forced to give uh, to give. Uh, biological material every month and six months we have doing this uh, we were doing this experiments which we are doing right now and uh, <coughs> there's not any success until the moment when one person person X came to the police station and said you know there's a uh, one guy in the city Colin Pitchfork he's paying me two hundred uh, dollars pounds pounds every month uh, in, uh, due to the like that I go and uh, give you the biological sample instead of him. So that's why this uh, police station, uh, police people came to this person, gave, uh, took the biological samples from him and proved this actually exactly Colin Pitchfork is the criminal and he killed these two girls. And uh, the thing is, there's a historically very important thing that it was the first uh, first precedent in, uh, in the law that uh, one person was kind of moved to the jail uh, and uh, his criminality was uh, proved by DNA testing. Okay, let's come back to our uh, test. Uh, in this uh, experiment, actually, we just uh, took... Hmm, I should use this computer, sorry. So, we just uh, took samples from 10 people uh, uh, in this room. Actually, can you raise uh, the hand, like Shivani, for sure? Like, I took the 10, uh, like 10 samples, and I didn't make actually any paternity test. Uh, <laughs> something like this. Uh, the, um, and actually, I would say that if you're going to do, if uh, you're going to do paternity test without informing person, uh, that you're going to do paternity test using his biological material, you will pay five thousand dollars in, in Germany, and actually in several countries you can go to the jail. So be careful about this. And then I was careful, but. Uh, I, I measured just uh, actually one thing, I measured uh, just um, uh, Y chromosome. We just took the, we, we know this kind of, we had 10 people, and uh, actually four of them, I think, uh, we were like the girl, right? And the girls, we do not have uh, X, uh, y, sorry, y chromosome, and girls have. And uh, we just made the PCR reaction. Oh, you ready? So, okay, I'm sorry. Um, we just made actually PCR reaction uh, against uh, uh, Y chromosome. 
That's it. So it just means that in the case of uh, guys, we should have a band, but in the case in the case of girls, we shouldn't shouldn't. So let's kind of make this camera. So I'm sorry for this. You see anything? Yeah. So. Mm, uh, can you close your eyes? <laughs> so, what? Okay, I just put 70, okay? So, the thing is that uh, uh, this is UV lamp. You remember this colorful thing, yeah? Uh, this uh, colorful thing uh, making some sort of light with a certain weight. When we are uh, kind of making, uh, like, lighting uh, this color, this uh, compound, by uh, a UV lamp. Actually, it's a super strong UV lamp. You should not look at this UV lamp uh, without special defense. I can do like this. Uh, the thing is, uh, I don't know, Julie, maybe, uh, Julie, you make everything correct, yeah? Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, the thing is that, uh, uh, oh, okay, look, uh, guy, guy, you see this band, band, uh, oh, sorry, I should have this Yeah, I'm mentioned this. <laughs> You know, actually, it's without a joke, uh, it can be a lot of pain for the eyes. I, I don't speak about carcinoma or like melanoma, or blah blah. Uh, I'm speaking about uh, painful things, eyes. So, <coughs> so the first two persons, uh, uh, the first two persons, guys, like one guy, and we see the line, you see. So it just means, yeah, yeah. Uh, super cool, this guy has a white cross on. Boris, Boris not here? Of course not here. I did perfect. Boris also has. Uh, Alona, are you here? I don't know here, but she, you know, we can call her. She doesn't have a white cross on, as well as Nina. Joe, I, I, I'm sorry, okay, Alex, okay, Alex, you also have, like, Alex, where are you? Okay, you have a crash, are you a bit, uh, why I'm asking, sorry. <laughs> okay, he, he, I'm sorry, but she made mistakes in the... <laughs> and she kind of mistaken with herself, she kind of put it in her team, eh, with this... <laughs> Now I, you, you can imagine you really need passion for this things like and uh, yeah. Anyway, so Julie also have uh, uh, she doesn't have sorry, I think she's here. So, uh, Evgeny has something, it's me, it's me. I have something, yeah, I have something. So she might doesn't have and uh, Costas, you're welcome to the man club. So yeah, actually uh, the last slide, I, I just want I want to say really thank you to Julie. She really supported me a lot in all this uh, uh, good enough experiments. Uh, and I also want to uh, thanks to a huge amount of people who go, gave us saliva with the question, what's they doing? Why need my saliva? It's my biological material. You should not sequence it, etc. We kind of peacefully say, we just want to check, uh, do we have white chromosome or not? So that's it.